Hey everybody, Luke here, and today we are talking a little bit about Parkinson's, and uh, this is just a basic introductory video about Parkinson's and kind of what happens with people who have Parkinson's, and we're also going to look at something that we call TRAP, which is just an acronym for a few uh, different descriptive terms of what people with Parkinson's tend to look like in terms of different movement patterns and things like that that they develop as the, the disease starts to progress. So just a quick background on Parkinson's. I think if you're watching the video, you probably have some knowledge of what it is, but basically it's deterioration in your brain in the basal ganglia, which these are certain like little nuclei in your brain that help you control smooth and coordinated movement patterns. So um, when you look at the acronym TRAP, which again is a descriptive term of what it's going to look like for people with Parkinson's, the first T, um, fairly well known, is going to be tremors. So it's very common if you or someone you know has Parkinson's that you'll see a tremor. The big key here with Parkinson's folks is that it's a resting tremor. So when they're sitting there at rest, a lot of times the hand will shake. Sometimes the feet, but most commonly the hands will shake and they'll just kind of go like that, more like an oscillating type of tremor. That's different from a tremor when you see someone with a different part of a potential brain injury or vestibular injury. Sorry, not vestibular injury, but um, oh, I'm blanking on the word, but a different type of injury to the brain um, where you're going to actually see a tremor with movement. So Parkinson's, again, when you're at rest, you tend to have a tremor. And then as soon as you start to move, let's say that arm that was tremoring, it tends to stop. Um, whereas other tremors, you want to have a tremor at rest, and when you move, it'll, it'll be shaky. So that's the first very common descriptive thing you'll see um, with someone with Parkinson's. So the R then is rigidity. And that's pretty self-explanatory, I think. But again, um, people with Parkinson's oftentimes are going to get into more like rigid movement patterns where they'll be stuck. Sometimes you'll get cogwheel rigidity, we call it, where you'll actually be stuck and you'll kind of, instead of having like a nice smooth movement pattern, it'll kind of like catch and then move. So that's again another common thing you'll see with Parkinson's. It's just not, again, those centers in your brain that are responsible for helping you perform smooth and coordinated movements just aren't. Um, processing as quickly and as efficiently as they used to. So that's the R. The A then, um, we call it akinesia, which is a very general term for a movement pattern that isn't normal. So A as in not normal kinesia movement patterns. So again, um, a more, again, broad descriptive terms. This is generally going to be uh, descriptive terms in the way that you walk if you have Parkinson's, which leads into the, the last one, which is P, is for posture, and I'll go into that too. But the movement patterns tend to be, again, they tend to be smaller. Um, you get uh, what we call a festinating walking pattern or a festinating gait pattern, where basically as your posture starts to go forward, um, and you start to look at the floor a lot too with Parkinson's and then you'll start to take real small like shuffling steps and if you watch someone who has this um, if you watch them walk that way it'll almost look like they're falling as they're walking they're just kind of like step 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 and they're getting farther and farther and farther forward and eventually you have to like stop and break it so that's the A, that's akinesia and again refers to just different changes in your movement patterns and then P is for posture so like I just mentioned, the most common thing you're going to see with the posture of someone with Parkinson's is that it tends to go forward. So the shoulders come forward, the back comes forward, the shoulders are rounding the head and the neck come forward. And um, this is again very common. You'll see people just kind of start to stoop almost. This is why you have to watch out for Parkinson's if you're using a walker. Um, although the walker is adding some safety and it's preventing you from falling a little bit, um, you tend to push forward onto the walker and lean on it and that can make your posture worse. Doesn't mean you shouldn't use a walker if you have Parkinson's, it just means you have to be very aware of that and you have to set the walker up a little higher than the average person just so that you are not encouraged to get into that forward posture. Um, okay, so that's the whole acronym for TRAP. And again, I put that on here kind of as the introductory video to Parkinson's as we talk a little more about it, um, just so that you can see what's going on. And again, I don't want to go into a lot of detail in terms of what's happening to your brain, um, but these are the things that we see. Obviously, for management of Parkinson's, there's various options in terms of medications, deep, uh, you know, deep brain stimulators, things like that. And then uh, in future videos, I'm going to talk a little more about how we help treat people with Parkinson's. So, but I just want to throw out two more key concepts today before I go on and do a video late, at a later date. So the first one is um, that the most common exercises you'll see for Parkinson's in terms of helping to break up any four of these things, you'll come across what's called the big exercises. So um, let's see if you can see my whiteboard here. The, the technical name, if you, like, if you Google it, is LVST big. 
So those are the most common exercises you're going to see in the physical therapy setting. So LVST big. Um, the LVST just refers to whoever developed the exercises. I don't even know what it stands for, to be quite honest. Um, and then the big is for these movement patterns. So again, with Parkinson's, you tend to get movement patterns that go, they kind of are condensing. They're less smooth and they're just smaller. So when you walk, you aren't getting like a big wide open arm swing and you're not getting much rotation in your trunk and your posture is coming forward. Um, and so these exercises are designed to basically exaggerate the movements you want to see. So they're big movements. Um, and you're just, the movements are utilizing things like opening up your posture, and a lot of them are utilizing cross body movements to really free up your posture. And the idea here with these is that you really are just exaggerating the normal movements that you want to see when you're moving and walking and when you're sitting and standing for your posture. And if you work these enough, they just get kind of worked into your brain, and then um, you may not move in that exaggerated fashion, but it's going to settle back down to a more normal movement pattern. So those are really interesting. I'm not sure if legally I'm allowed to put much information on video about how the big exercises work because that LVST company owns them. So what I would say for now, before I figure that out, if you want to look at them, um, just go to YouTube and, and put in those two phrases there, so LVST big. And there's a nine-minute video I saw in there that just walks you through a whole bunch of them. They're pretty self-explanatory. The key with those, of course, with anything where you're potentially having balance issues is um, that you want to be safe. So check those out. And if I am able to put more information out on those, I will. Um, the second thing I want to throw out, too, is that um, we see a lot of people with balance issues, falls, and Parkinson's a lot of times is one of those components. What you want to keep in mind is if you have Parkinson's and you're worried about things like balance and fall prevention and stuff like that, is that definitely you want to focus on the Parkinson's. You want to focus on doing whatever you can to modify or improve those trap type things. You want to incorporate things like the big exercises. Um, we do aquatic therapy a lot of times too because it's a safe environment to exaggerate movement patterns. The other thing you want to keep in mind though is that anybody, regardless of whether they have Parkinson's or not, anybody who has experienced a decrease in activity over a period of time is also going to deal with things like weakness and decreases um, other uh, balance centers, the effectiveness of those balance centers. And so you don't want to just assume because you have Parkinson's and you fall into this nice little um, acronym here and you see these things, you don't want to just assume that if you treat those that, you're, that you've done everything you can to improve your balance. So just keep that in mind. If you've seen some of my other videos on balance, like about the three balance systems and ways to improve you know, strength in your ankles, strength in your hips, different balance exercises, you want to make sure that you keep those in mind as well. Because more than likely, again, if you have Parkinson's or someone you know does and they have had a decrease in their activity level, they're going to be dealing with those issues as well. So just keep all that in mind as you're going through and um, trying to figure out you know, good ways that you can improve your mobility, stay independent, and you know, just keep enjoying life. I think nowadays there's a lot of options for people with Parkinson's, which is great. Um, there's also things like uh, loud programs and things like that where you're projecting your voice, which actually goes into the big exercises as well. So that's probably enough length for one minute we're already, or for one video. We're already eight, past eight minutes here. So anyways, just your introduction. Um, look forward to some more videos. If you have questions on this, send me an email or just leave a comment um, below the video. There you go for today. Thanks for watching.